As we all know, there was a shocking crime in the American workplace this week. In Connecticut, a worker forced to resign from his job opens fire. He would kill eight co-workers before turning his gun on himself. This is the latest in a long list of mass killings at U.S. job sites. Here's just a few of the recent incidents. In February of this year, three Alabama University of Alabama professors are gunned down during a meeting. In June of 2008, a disgruntled worker kills five people at a Kentucky plastics plant before killing himself. In January 2006, six postal workers are killed in California. In July 2004, four workers at a Kansas meatpacking plant are killed. There's much, much more, but you get the idea. Timothy Dimoff is a security expert who advises companies on issues of safety and violence, and he joins us from Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, Timothy, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. These are tough uh, economic times. Uh, is you know, is the uh, is the tough time are the tough times out there are they contributing to a more dangerous workplace is that what we're seeing yeah it's one big factor uh, the tougher times economic times people losing jobs reading about it the media coverage uh, there's a lot a lot of negative uh, press out there and people are feeling squeezed today they're concerned um, and basically the, the human mind can only take so much and it's starting to crack and according to the U.S. Labor of, uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, 1,000 people were killed on the job between 1997 and 2007 by a co-worker, a former co-worker, or an acquaintance uh, or a relative. Um, and I, that's just an amazing number. I, I'm just curious, you know, are people aware of this, that this is going on? Yeah, they are aware of it. And, and, and the sad thing about it is, in most of these shootings, it's not a secret. These people have talked to coworkers, family members, and others about how they feel, how disgruntled they are, and the fact of what they're going to do or possibly what they're thinking of doing. And they even give names of people they're mad at. Um, and, and what we've had in the past, and still we need much more ability for coworkers, families, and people to come forward with that information. It's crucial, and it's the missing link in a lot of these shootings uh, taking place. And here's another number that caught our attention, Tim. Uh, $36 billion, that's how much American businesses spend each year to try to combat violence on the job. Uh, you have some recommendations for companies, right? Uh, absolutely. I mean, the first thing and foremost, the company's got to take a stance against workplace violence, bullying, harassment, all those negative things. Secondly, companies got to do a better job of controlling the flow of the people, the vendors, and the visitors in and out of their buildings. They just have too many entrances and exits that all these different types of people visiting or working there are utilizing, which makes it very easy for the perpetrator to come back, and that perpetrator knows that he or she can come back because of all this ability. So control the flow. And then the last thing that's very important, which we're just starting to see a lot of use on, is that 800 anonymous number. We've got to have a format where coworkers and family and friends can anonymously call in to companies and let them know when someone isn't happy, someone's starting to talk about doing some wrong things or evil things or, or, or harmful things, you know, and with this anonymous 800 number, we're finding out that we can discover a lot of this stuff much more earlier in the st early stages and then we can circumvent it. It sounds like what you're saying, Tim, is that uh, perhaps the lessons that were learned in many of these school shootings that happened across the country should be applied to the workplace. I mean, I think back to Virginia Tech, a story that I covered, and a lot of the red flags that happened at Virginia Tech were overlooked or missed or disregarded, and, and tragedy happened. And it sounds like there may be red flags just like uh, the ones that you see at school shootings happening in the workplace. Yeah, you know, my company, Sachs Consulting, we have done extensive interviews across the country, uh, you know, in the different school shootings and the business shootings. Um, and every time we walk away from those interviews and those research projects, we find out that it was not a secret. It amazes us that not only one person knew, several people knew, but everybody tends not to want to talk about it or thinks they shouldn't, whereas we need to change it. You're, you're not being a snitch. You're not telling on somebody. You're actually helping them. And we're just now starting to get a grip on that to convince coworkers, families, and friends that the best thing you can do is help report that so we can get those people some help. Yeah, and, and one of the things that, you know, I was thinking about coming in today, you know, getting ready to do this segment was, well, I, you know, I swiped my little pass to get into the building, 
And, you know, it seems to me a lot of uh, corporate office places are set up the same way. They, you have the little pass that you have to swipe to get into your building. That's fine when it comes to stopping a terrorist or somebody who is an outsider, an intruder coming into the office place. But it really doesn't do anything when it comes to stopping a workplace shooter, right? Well, if they're still employed, it doesn't. Now, if they've recently been terminated, their card's not going to work anymore, and access control is a good factor for those kind of situations. But in the situation that you were just talking about, where you have a current worker employee who's still there, once again, it goes back to this person is sending out red flag signals, talking about it, doing things at work. Many times, they're not talking to supervisors. Uh, they're, they're, they're resisting direction. Uh, they're no longer hanging around with their coworkers. I mean, besides talking about it, they have physical and emotional actions that they take that people notice something isn't right and, and continue People continue to ignore it, they don't report it, and it builds up and it keeps building up. Um, and, you know, we have situations where unions confidentially are told stuff, you know, and they feel that they got to keep it quiet. It's a union uh, situation with their, with their co-worker and their union member. But once it crosses that line where this person is starting to exemplify, you know, mental and emotional issues right. and starting to talk about it or withdraw themselves, we need to step forward. Well, very sound advice, and uh, thanks for bringing it to us. Uh, Tim Dimoff, a security consultant on the, on the rash of workplace shootings that we've seen in recent years, a very important subject. Uh, Tim, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Th thank you.